Any special places that we visit, and every, every place we do visit has a special significance, but I, I think of very few places as significant and special to our ministry as this one. This is, this is a ministry that was discovered in a, in a fabulous way, and some of you know that story. I mean, it was basically Hector was out, like on the road there, with a little mini camp. What's that? Uh, it was a divine appointment. Barry said it. And we made connection, and <clears throat> he's grown, we've grown, and we've grown together um, again. And, and just uh, one of our dear partners that Power Ministry supports year-round. And uh, when we're finished, maybe I'll have Brian tell you a little bit about what we support Hector with during the year. But um, at this time... There's no other people that we want to say hello to and have you talk to you than, than the founders and the directors and the, the ministers, the people who love this place like no one else. Let's please welcome Hector and Mary Lou Luna. Actually, um, some of you guys might know Dan Carreño from Ridgecrest. Um, he and I happened to be, we were at the Navy Notre Dame football game in San Diego a couple years ago, and we saw this slogan, die first then quit. We said that would be a great thing to put on a shirt. And you know, we took it to Mark, and that was in October. By that January, we had that yeah. shirt. So there may be some of these. Look for them in the power store on Monday night, okay? Yeah. All right, so we're with Hector and Mary Lou. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of worked out where we do a little question and answer, a little interview with this fine couple. So I think we'll start that, okay? Yeah. All right, yeah. first of all, Hector looks so much calmer and and uh, breathing easier than he was than in January yeah. because there are less people. So first of all, tell us how many people were here approximately the last time we were here well the last time yeah i was here we had like in here in santa one we got close to 2200 in santa two we have like 3000 people wow. the last time yeah was here and these and those are all refugees people yes. who had no status anywhere and we're stuck in Mexico, right? Yeah, they, oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. They supposed to, well, they, most of their family, they, most of the people, they run in from from the cartel mm -hmm. and the countries, they kill like the, uh, the parents or the mm -hmm. son because they don't want to get like in, in, in more, most of it in Honduras, they have, they run in from, and they don't have no, no other place to go. So they here stuck in the, and, and, and Reynosa. Okay, so so at that point, 2,200, 3,000, yeah. 5,200 people in a pretty small area. Plus, how many waiting outside? Oh, outside we got like, I'm gonna say like 7,000 people oh, wow. waiting outside. Oh, wow. Waiting to get in, and every yeah. time the gate opened, yeah. they thought it was their turn, right? Yeah. And it wasn't yeah. quite yet their turn. Amen. So, uh, how many people are, are in the two Senders now. From both senders, we had like, I'm gonna say like 5,000 people. Uh, right now, we have here in Senda, you said that uh, most of the people, uh, some they already go to another another uh, entry like uh, Piedras Negras because they wait so long. And most of the people they working right now, uh, in the afternoon, they're gonna be able to give place to stay because they don't have one so we allow them to come and sleep and and some some is uh, that out there as i said in my side and then they just they said 
eh, we're going to wait because we don't have enough space for, for them. And some days sleep on the, on the tent. We just see that we have tents outside so they can sleep in. So, uh, so approximately how many people are here now? Right now we got 900. In, in here? In, in here and send that one. From 2200 to 900. 900 and, and send that two. Right now we got 1500. So, so from 5,000, about, about half. About half. And yes. you look so much better. Uh, well, <laughs> now I'm working at the, I told my wife it was last two years ago. I'm a fix, fix or, or fence right there. <laughs> And that's what I'm doing right now, our kitchen and our fence. I'm put them, I'm working in, inside on the counter. Tell everybody, um, first of all, can, maybe Mari Lou can pull out her phone and show the countries. <laughs> How many countries? Okay, enseñales cuantos hay en The different countries that these people are coming from. And uh, we, most of the time we, we got them on the phone, see how, how many people we got them, send the one, how many people we got them, send the two, so my wife is the one, the one is showing. Guatemala. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Haiti, Colombia, Costa Rica, República Dominicana, Ecuador, África, Congo, Camerún, Angola, Rusia y Venezuela. Oh, wow. and, 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 and in January, there were people from Ukraine and Russia, Russia mm -hmm. Czech yeah. Republic, yeah. So yeah. they were from Europe. Was from that? India. In, from India. India. Okay. So tell everybody when they come here, what's the their their process to <coughs> legally enter the United States? Okay. Uh, most of the people, uh, her, her, her vision, they don't even know is is to go enter to United States. But when they got there. Uh, United States, they not gonna cross like five or six thousand people. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they what they tell them is okay. We're not gonna cross you today, so please go to Santa the Vida. They're gonna feed you. They're gonna give you clothes. They're gonna. They don't know. They're gonna. They also some of them, the the officer that let you know. They also gonna teach you how to know God. Oh, wow. When those people walk over here, the first thing they walk in at the gate and. And there was most of the people said, I've never been in a place like that because I find my, my son or my daughter find the peace, you know, like, and the, you can see all the kids right now and the parents, it's like, they feel, they feel comfortable inside because it's not like, even in, the, in their own house, they say, you know, uh, most of the time they tell me that uh, uh, they feel good in, in here, they feel the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And most of the people, they stay mm, almost like right now between uh, uh, one month or either three okay. months or the less is like five months but for them it's like i'm teaching to know know the lord let him know we can get this process the, the waiting for go to the united states uh, for the kingdom of heaven most of the people got saved and they got they say thanks god to be here because if i'm not if if I'm not able to be here, I was not known Christ. Mm -hmm. I saw wow. <clears throat> okay, yes. sorry, gotta go. <laughs> sorry, that that's Michelle from Conway Smano's friend. In fact, um, was Marty? Marty, can you do you have Michelle's number? I do. I, can you text her? To the van. Robbie's not. I, I, sorry. Come here for a minute. <laughs> Commercial announcement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do me a favor. <clears throat> Just a minute. Um, just give me the number. Well, no, I, I want you. I want you to here. This is what I need you to send her is the address. Of the yeah, do you ever have issues with uh, cartel trying to get in here? Uh, yes, we we have. We've been having problem this about four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we have person a, a person they had problem in that other mm -hmm. other state of Mexico, mm -hmm. and they they was himself. It was like. Come over here, and uh, 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 we have—I don't know what's happening, but uh, I see uh, outside trucks with uh, machine gun, and and myself, I went in, and they—I was asking them anything that something happened. They said no. We just wait for 
above, see what's going on. So, and then about 30 minutes later, they knock on the gate and they said, uh, hey, who is the responsible in this place? I went in and I said, we got a, a person is, is inside on the compound that uh, we, need a, we, we need them. And so, uh, myself, I said, you know, uh, uh, and who's the person, what's the name of it? And I said, they says, we don't know their name, but uh, please, we need us, y'all need to step out, everybody out. Oh. So, uh, myself, I just let them know. I said, you know, I, I, I'm the responsible. I'm, I'm not going to let the children out. Mm -hmm. We're going to come out, but not the children, even the family. So he said, yeah, just bring just the men. So I, I, I called everybody. Wow. I said, we got problem. Yeah. In this ministry, if you bring problem from the outside, please don't bring the problem in the inside. So, uh, and the, the, the guy always, you know, I, God is so mighty because he said, okay, uh, are you the pastor? I said, I'm the pastor. He said, okay, uh, we're not going to let people out. We just want that person. Mm -hmm. And they showed me the, the, the ID. Featured and I called the guy. I said, "You got a problem. You in a big trouble. So now you need it. Let wow. me pray for you. I don't know what's happening, mm -hmm. but let me pray for you because you had problem in your country. And the guys, he said, "Yes, I do." Uh, mm -hmm. I said, "You know, one thing we help migrants. We don't help cartels, people. You know, if you're in trouble, you could let me pray for you." And this guy, this guy, he always saw that we was praying for this guy and. And then he, he walked out, he said, okay. He says, you know, his, this guy, he, he come in, it's, it's like our, how do you say, that our, our, mm, like, you know, like two cartels? Yeah, oh, right. rivals. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, but he says, the, the, why are you praying for him? I said, well, I'm praying for him so, so God can touch him. He said, well, let me tell you something. That big man, come on. Let me tell you something. It's the right thing you can find, God. We gonna let you. We gonna let you stay here because we know this place. But if you, if you, being, if uh, it's good to change. It's good to change on life. If you wanna change your life, you in a good place. But if you wanna be around. Be like, you know, big macho man, you and big trouble, we're gonna disappear. And this guy was like, he was like crying. He was crying out of it because it's like, uh, wow. I can make it because he said, you know, and put it like a probation, you know, like probation. Oh, wow. We're gonna watch on you, we're gonna stay watching. And this guy, he gave his life to the Lord because he never Amen. seen that. Uh, Scared straight, right? Yeah. <laughs> So I uh, praise the Lord for that. Yeah. You know, yeah. God is yeah. so So, good question. Oh, good question. So, um, and we'll get back to, we'll circle around to to some of those types of situations. But uh, just tell everybody, uh, how do all these people eat? I mean, how how do, how do they? What's the structure of? What's going well, on? you know, guys, when the, uh, I want to continue, oh, let everybody, let the, this is God's house. Mm -hmm. Amen. This belongs to the Lord. God sends me, called me to this ministry. And uh, when long time ago, the way God, he worked on me and with the migrants, I mean, we don't have anything. We don't have, uh, I, has to live, I has to leave my wife. I has to leave her, leave the children. And I said, uh, uh, I, I got to go find the Lord. Mm. And she, like, you crazy, you know, like, <laughs> I left my wife with the children and, and come over here to this ministry <clears throat> and to build this ministry according to his kingdom. So we leave, uh, most of the people been asking me, lots of, even pastor asked me that I was crazy. I'm, you are crazy mm. because I had all the migrants. <laughs> we was in the middle of the garbage. All this area down here was nothing but garbage. Mm -hmm. And it was a pig right in, in that area. It was like 
I'm, I'm like 1,500 pigs, and I was preaching down here, and then I had those pigs right there, and I don't know if you have been around the near to the pig, and, and it stink, I mean, but most of the people, it was right there praising God, and, and I said, God, you called me for this, and please help me, please help me. I don't know if you've been dealing with the Lord, you know, something, something bothers you, that you serve him, and I said, God, help me on that. It happened to the Lord bring the river in the flush all the area that Blood. even but wow. said that the village stand up and they took all the pigs. The Lord took all the pigs and I praise his name. <laughs> so and from that time, even the man, he was so angry, but then the next day he said, you know. Uh, Pastor Hector, he bring, he had this big, I don't know, about three feet, I mean, three meters long. He said, I got my beard, that's the only one I saved, but it, it was, you know, dead. Do you wanna, yeah, wanna cook this pig? Uh -huh. I said, why not? So God bless us, uh, and from that day, the Lord has get me, told me that I gotta leave my faith. Mm -hmm. I have to leave my children, I have to leave my job, I has to leave my wife and come over here. And God has shown me that He's going to provide. Wow. I was crying. It's not easy to serve God. No. I mean, it's not easy. It's not. You cannot leave your wife, leave your job, leave your children. It's not easy. I cried many years, but God is faithful. Amen. He brought my wife. He lit this ministry up, and now. We live by faith. We don't have financial. The government is not help us. So he can say, well, I'm going to give you monthly or weekly. We live by faith. And thanks God for the power that God has sent us. I mean, I was crying one day. I said, Lord, we don't got no, no meat, no food, nothing, no clothes. And God sent me because he said in his promise, if, if you've been called by the kingdom of heaven, I mean, you're going to stay. I mean, he's going he's gonna to stay and he's going to give you on the vision, even in dreams. And he mm -hmm. sought me the beautiful people like you to come into this ministry. I have not seen it yet, but God says, I will provide. Mm -hmm. I will provide. You just stay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good to be, I'm saying up to you it's good to be on obedience, no matter what. I mean, a lot of things are going to happen, but God never forgot his promise. Mm. He died it for me and my wife. He returned my wife. It's a beautiful wife. And uh, 14 years later, mm. I stand up working down here for his wow. kingdom, living by faith. I mean, uh, he, she don't know I was living. I mean, she was telling me one day, you have, how do you deal with us? And you don't got no work. I told her about the phone. I mean, we got a beautiful home. Uh, she got a beautiful gate, and like she was wondering, I said, "How do you get all that?" It's by faith, mm -hmm. and God is still working on my wife. You survive on yes. miracle. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how did power? How does power support your ministry? Well, power. He power is a wonderful ministry coming from the heaven because on the electricity. I mean, to be able to pay the electricity on this ministry. Mm -hmm. I, I can, I don't know where I've been right now. And always power says, how much the, the electricity? I mean, like, ¿cuánto es la luz este mes? Every month, not two months, one month, I pay like 30,000 pesos. Sometimes it comes like 40,000 pesos. And uh, in the beginning, when I saw the electricity, I said, I gotta go get a job. <laughs> the first day that on my, my mind, knowing the Lord, was I gotta go get on, I gotta go get a job. I went looking for a job. I got many people, it's a lot of money, you can see a lot of guys. But I went looking for a job and I told this lady, uh, I'm a painter, I'm a whatever, I'm, uh, we need to pay the light bill. And the lady, we told us to fix the, the wall, it was a big wall, we fixed the big wall, and I need the light because when the man come over the only thing they come and cut the lights, they don't care. But you know, that day the lady, or the whole wall fell down, 
the whole wall. And the lady, she was so angry. She said, y'all not good. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you are Mexican or you know. And I said, well, I'm sorry. But in the moment, uh, when I was myself, my heart was, I said, I'm, I'm sorry. And, and I had it. I had it a group of brothers that let me tell me, Brother Hector, uh, what do you need? And I had my electricity and, and, and the light bill on my hand because <coughs> trusting God, you gotta trust in God. Sometimes you wanna go to uh, many people and say, hey, uh, I, need some, I need some help. Uh, even my wife, she said sometimes, Go ask him, I gotta trust God. I mean, you gotta trust him, the one he sent you, you gotta trust him. But I know I'm, sometimes it's hard to know the wisdom when God sent you people. I mean, and, and I said, uh, and I have power, even he gave anger with me because he said, you never let us know what you need. But thanks God that I have my wife. And I always still let my wife with me this, you know? Like, and I have power, I said, hey, whatever you need, and I had a brother one day telling me when I was returned with that, nothing. He said, Brother Hector, God sent you to this ministry. If God sent you, he, God is going to provide. He's going to provide the meal, the light, everything. He provide my clothes. He provide our clothes. He, amen. So God is, to me, as we live by faith. I got to, I has to live by faith. And it's very hard to live by faith. But God is going to provide everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so we come down here to see you three weeks, and then yes. once again in October, and then once again maybe sometime during the year. So four or five times per year. Um, so what? What are? What are? Just tell the guys. What are some of the items that we are able to bring to you to help out? Well, you can see I got some T-shirts. I share, I got them right there. I share with the peoples. They coming in. I'm not sharing to anybody because we we live in a different, a difficult. Right now we got so many people that I give families. Sometimes I give families. They own father, the father of the family. They don't have no clothes because run, uh, the, the, the home, they was running for their life. So we got to keep the clothes. Uh, the meal that always, uh, uh, See? Mm -hmm. They always bring some rice that I was calling yesterday. What do you need, brother? Rice and beans and, and the clothes. So it's what they always say. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, always bring us some, some, uh, some, uh, ¿cómo se llama? Some diapers. Diapers, para que te escuchen. Diapers. She's not help. She's not yeah. anything. <laughs> Meal. And, and all the kind of stuff that always, and I thank God for y'all, thanks God for power, because without y'all, be honest with you, God put it in my heart, I got so many people. My people is gonna provide, because I was asking the Lord, I said, what am I gonna do with all those people? I don't know if y'all know this, uh, the powerful that God put in my, feed him, you know, feed him. Mm -hmm. And I got, I got on that. And I said, how am I gonna feel though? Bunch of people, I man. Last time we had seven, seven, seventeen thousand people outside and inside. And myself, how am I gonna feed him? And the next day, I got the phone call. Y'all bring us uh, uh, how many trucks? Three trucks full of rice and beans. Yeah, yeah. And I said, you know, it's to me from this and this earth to trust the Lord. Trust Him with all your heart. He will. I mean, I've been seeing it, and I said, most of the time, I said, Lord, please forgive me. I just we doubt, forgive me. We doubt. Yes, yes, because we doubt. And, and, and I call it that we do have. God is real. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell you, God is here. God is here because Amen. God showed me that y'all, y'all, <laughs> going to supply the Lord. I don't know how, but it's what I trust in. Mm -hmm. Trust. Yes. Tell, tell the folks here, tell the guys here. Uh, they know they get food and they get clothes, and they, but how do they get Jesus here? <laughs> I'll tell you this story right now a few minutes ago. I had this guy coming in. 
How can those people know the Lord? Sometimes go for like necessity. Myself, I have to let them know that if you're struggling, you don't run from your country because God is, he's in Honduras, he's anywhere. Mm -hmm. Only thing what happened is you don't, you don't know at the moment. I mean, all those people that come over here, I, I hear some sometimes let them know, hey, you need the Lord. If you, are you going to the United States? Most of the people say, yes, I go, well, how can you go to the United States if you don't have Jesus? I mean, do you think the United States is going to receive demons? Oh, no. 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 I have to deal with the people sometimes. But God, the United States, receive all the good people. All the good people. If you are bad people, you need to receive the Lord. Uh, no matter what, Jesus, no matter what you have done, you kill whatever you've done. But receive the Lord right now. And I promise you, and I promise you very soon, they're going to call for the United States to come and, and they've been happening. They've been happening in, in my, I mean, I've been speaking to those people that said, Pastor, you know, you preached last week and I'm leaving tonight. I received Christ last week. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I say, Lord Almighty. I, I go myself, I say, Lord, this happened. This happened. <laughs> <laughs> so they get, uh, so are there weekly church services daily? How, tell them a little bit about the, the, the spiritual training here. How does it happen? I got many people from everywhere. Uh, and I, I, we have service every day in this, in, in, in this at the chapel. In the nighttime, we have. Chapels, we got many pastors they here. We got uh, a brothers right now in Senda two. They in church right now. I cannot be Senda one, Senda two, but I got pastors. They they showing. They always tell me what's happening. They call us. They call my wife, and uh, it, I gotta make sure the the person they receive Christ and let him know. Uh, it's very hard because this ministry just for migrants and people receive the Lord, he goes. Before I was saying that, my God, I'm gonna spend it all my life. I mean, let those people know, and I never seen that again. But no exchange. When they leave, they go anywhere, anywhere, I receive a wrong phone call or eat it through the mail. Pastor, I wanna thank God because when I come, I was three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years in Senda, and God changed me in that place. In either an error, the Lord is, he showed me. And right now, I'm, I'm training. It's something that I was doing in Senda de Vida, because many people, they, even they have church in, in Honduras, in Nicaragua, Salvador, they say down here, and some of those brothers down here in the United States, they always, they call my wife, Pastor, thank you so much. I'm, I got my job. I'm, I'm, I, I entered the United States from the right way. You always teach us how to do the right way. So that for me and my wife, I said, Lord, I, I want to thank you. You know. So talk a little bit about that process. I mean, you wanted to have Jesus then go to the U.S., right? But how, how, I mean, are the buses still coming? Yes. Okay, so talk about that process as to how these people are legally processed yes. then then go across it i don't want to get in so much on that because in, in many years it, it was a man come over here a man of god and there was so many people on the on, right there on the on the enter mm -hmm. and it was a man of god down here come over here. i don't want to i don't want nothing to do mm -hmm. with it but one day he, he was a minister and he came over here and said, Pastor, I need to go to uh, to the uh, to the border. And I said, why do you need to go to the border for? He said, because when I was coming from there, I see many people. And I said, oh my Lord, I said, I don't want to go over there. He said, how about let's go get some, some bread, some sweet bread, some coffee. So I said, yeah, we can do that. So we make some coffee, we make a bath some bread, and I go out there just to feed, get us some, and there was an officer there. He said, you from the center of the Vida, right? And I said, yeah. He said, can you deal with, 
can you take it with you? I said, no, because they want to come to the United States. I said, I got five, six hundred there. He said, okay. And in that moment, I can see the bunch of uh, officers, the, the big leaders, you know, and they was looking at me, and they, and they was calling me, and they said, can you, they was calling me, and the man that was, the man of God was standing right there, and he says, uh, uh, he calling you, so I went over there, and he said, how you doing? I'm doing okay, and he said, sir, can, are you the one here, you got the one, you got shelter there? I said, yes. He said, can, can we work together? I said, no, I, I work for the Lord. I don't want to do, I don't, I don't want to. He said, well, he said, what? Can, can you tell those people, can you go and tell those people that uh, uh, I'm going to let it enter? Just, it was about, ¿cuánto eran? Como unos 6,600, 600. It was about 600 people at the board. So I said, uh, and this man, it was Frank, he says, he said, Pastor, I thank God he's using, he's going to use you. I don't want to believe that. But when he saw me running by and forth, I mean, it was like, and I, I was running and said, uh, please get a line. Only men get a line. Because they told me, say, just put, just men. But on my heart, I said, what men? And what not children? So I would run up over there, I run over there. And I was running back over here. I said, ma'am, excuse me, sir. I said, what man? I said, what? What? I can take the older men and let the families in. And I said, okay. Okay, tell them, put all the ladies, put the ladies here. And uh, I went up there, put all the big line of ladies. And the man said, what are you going to do? And myself, I was back and forth, you know, like, even the officer, I said, I said, man, sir, I said, uh, if you take all those people, I'm making sure myself, I'm going to clean the whole, because it was, it was trouble, the way the people was cursing. If you take all the family, and the man said, so he said, who's this guy? He said, well, he's the pastor, Hector, he got a shelter there, he feed him. And he was not know everything about me. So he said, well, how about this? How about this? Let's get him in. Oh, you can. And he said that he's going to clean the whole, you know, so they can look good, the, the, the entry. Mm -hmm. uh, they had tents. They had clothes everywhere. So that I went up there and I said, uh, he says, uh, well, uh, yeah, tell, tell him to bring him in. So I ran back to him and I said, guess what? And it was like good news. It said, guess what? Everybody's this one accepted. From that day on, it's been happened five years ago. See? About four years ago. About five years ago. And then that guy, he says, uh, I like the way God used you. So we wanna can we work together? I said, no, sir. I don't like to work with uh, my work because they gonna think that I'm, and I'm living in a bed, such, I'm in, 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 in Reynosa, is very bad. So from that day on, the officer, he said, they was calling us, called, calling me, he said, how many people that you had? I said, my God, I said, I got, I got 900. He said, okay, can you send me, what, what do you got? Is what we have, the list, what do you got? I said, I got, Honduras, Nicaragua, Salvador. Uh, you got pregnancy lady? I said, yes, sir, I got some praise. He said, okay, order the pregnancy ladies and bring like 20. And they, they started from there. So, and every time we was doing it, and how many single men? People being the porter? I said, yes, sir, do we have people? They have some bad records? I said, yes, we don't want them. So we start letting them know, I said, hey, God got you here for, for purpose. God is going to use you. God Almighty, He's going to do some, something. You're not here for a reason. You are here because God is going to use you. So we got all those brothers that received the Lord, people being deported, received God, and working. And I guess, I mean, God is still working. That's with the immigration to send us. Uh, how is it still about 200 a day? 
Yeah, yeah. no, that's now 180? 180 days. 180 day a day, three, three, three buses? I, I, the bus it just left not long ago. Okay. And they line up, right there. they line up, they go through a process. Yes. They have to have a sponsor. Yes. If no sponsor, they come back. Return but back it's over. pretty cool to see them sitting here and just go up and ask a person, where are you going? Milwaukee. Where are you going? Seattle. Where are you going? New York. I mean, they're all going somewhere different, but. Yes. All right. But that's God is so good. But they're going with Jesus, right? It, First, man. Gotta take the Lord. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, Mary Lou, tell us how is it working with the ladies and the children? Como trabaja con las las mujeres, los niños. Sí. Pues uh we help the families first thing we help them on them first of all we make sure they have they have a place so they can sleep and clothes so we can uh, they can uh, be okay we have families separate we got this the dormitory with the young made the dormitory for the families, we got this dormitory for the, the family that they're about to leave tomorrow. And we got a single uh, dormitory over there uh, for, for the single ladies. Uh, if the children's being sick, we, uh, most of the time we uh, tell the doctors. We had doctors from mm, doctors without borders. Mm -hmm. so you, uh, we, uh, we we have uh, <clears throat> say this? Diapers. diapers. We have diapers. <laughs> we feed them with diapers. I mean, give diapers, <laughs> meal, and all they, they need. Yeah. They get, yeah. And so you can see it's a team effort. And I think you still have the other couple that helps you. Mm -hmm. All right. So yes. they have one. So basically, it's these two, one other couple, and then any volunteers or groups. And, and we're blessed to be able to come here three times and, and, and provide some goods, but um, this is where they're at. <clears throat> no vacations. I mean, I think you're vacation. You went out to dinner with Mark and Kyle and Ben, right? We had a vacation. <laughs> and that was the first time they've been in a restaurant in years. And so um, this couple, provide so much hope. They provide so much light and, and you know, the smiles of Hector and Mary Lou just are worth their weight in gold. But we're so blessed and so honored to partner with you. And we wish we could do more, but you know that we're a phone call away, right? You can call yes. us at any time. Um, Brian, explain a little bit what else, I mean, you know, what else goes down during the year? Um, well, I'm sitting here listening to this, and I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, are overwhelmed. I, I walked in here, and I, I, I'm i almost shameful or embarrassed or uh, have a feeling of uh, awe, if you will. Um, not only what some people have to deal with, but also for Hector and Mary Lou, just two individuals um, with a little bit of help, um, with uh, a lot of love in their heart, but um, yes, power partners along with them. Um, Senda DeVita, how long has our relationship been? Almost since the beginning. Yeah, long time. Yes. Uh, since I remember being up on the roof roofing yeah. and, and building some of the, the senior center here. Yeah. Um, just great memories, unbelievable relationship. Um, how can you pass up that smile, right? <laughs> the most amazing smile in the world. So uh, Hector has been a big conversation of ours at the board retreats. Um, we consider uh, all of our ministries. The thing that makes it a little bit unique is that all of the other ministries that we contribute to, usually on a monthly basis down here, whether it's Alianza or Rio Bravo or Refugio or whatever, um, 
have a little more Bruce, another one, um, have a little more uh, ability to accept funds and so forth. So uh, in the banking system, in the banking, yeah, yeah regular banking system. <laughs> so that's why on a, on a three time a year we contributed in January. We'll we'll give them a gift here today, and then when we come for the uh, for the October trip and the scout out. Um, we do what we can. We, we do the best we can. Bruce has also been instrumental here at Santa DeVita when we were trying to get funds to you and, and so forth. We were working through Walmart for a while uh, for some pay. But, um, but it's, it's an absolute privilege. It really is. I think the thing that makes uh, it so special for me is that you know, I'll, I'll write checks on a monthly basis. And I signed a check, and I, I think I was telling Bruce I should put a happy face or a, a God be with you on each check, and, and, and I'm sort of overwhelmed, and I, I don't get to do that. But with Hector, Hector, um, in fact, can we do this right now? Yep. Okay. Um, I get to personally ignore the, the fancy envelope, but here is a gift to you, our annual, our triannual gift to you. Um, we thank you very much, and we appreciate everything that you do here. Thank you. And then along, along with, with our financial gifts, every time we come, we bring goods and services, um, Bibles, we, we bring the diapers, uh, toothpaste, hygiene products. I mean, we, we just try to fill up vans and trucks. We did it in January. And so how can we do that? How can we do that? And it's only through our, our annual fundraising. I think mean, most of you veterans know, and sometimes you get tired of hearing of it, but you know, when, when you help us out with our golf tournament, when you help us out with the super raffle, if you are a monthly donor, this is where your dollars are going. They are going to provide humanitarian aid, but they are going toward helping people to find Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So. It, it's just so important to know that that where where collectively our funding sources go, it, it's all to help Jesus and Hector's and Mary Lou is one of the big portions of that. So we thank you for who you are, and and when we go home, it's up to us to pray for you. It's on us. You know, you can't leave here and not feel led to pray for them. Whenever you feel led. I mean, we could say who will commit for a year, but it's easy to say yes here and go home. I just say, when you think about sending to Vita, just say a quick prayer for Hector and Mary Lou because you have no idea what's going on that day. So what